My name is Richard Swatton and I've been an astrologer for over two-thirds of my lifetime. And welcome to this review of the sun signs. My intention, however, is to try and get beneath the signs, uh, within them, uh, look at the structural processes operating. Because the, the signs of the zodiac are more than a list of correspondences or character associations or particular forms of behavior. Those are interesting and uh, they were noted very well in the 1970s with Linda Goodman's sun signs. How to spot an Aries, how to spot a Leo, how to spot a particular sign. Certain characteristics are indeed entertaining. But what I'm interested in is looking at the root principles of the sign, the ordering processes. The signs really start off uh, by taking the qualities of the seasons because the zodiac as a whole is actually a, a tale, a story of an ordering process. And each one of the signs has a specific, has a specific thing to say in the, in the overall cycle of the year. We could say that the signs are the seasonal moods and each, each season passes through three stages. There are four seasons and so therefore this is obviously relating to the 12 signs. Each sign has an image but in that image is condensed a whole variety of things from mythic associations, ancient wisdom traditions. Each sign has a response mechanism and a type of behavior that goes with it. It's as if it reacts to life in a particular way. Uh, and you could also see the signs perhaps as a, a particular tint or a mode of perception through which people look. And so when they're seeing, they kind of select things from the world through their sun sign because they have an affinity with it. It reflects them in some way. The signs are an embodiment of nature and so they don't just operate in the human vehicle, they operate everywhere. The signs also have an innate ordering principle, a teleology, an intent or a purpose to them. These are a tale to be told. It's as if there is, as I say, a developing process in each sign that uh, the sun sign in particular will show what this ordering process is. When we become our sun sign, what we become is more connected to our individual purpose. The word purpose in, is interesting in this regard. It means finding one's own place. Psychologically, it means finding one's identity one's will to live, and then put that out with intent, radiating from a centre uh, of which the sign uh, uh, expresses when the sun is within it. The symbol of the sun is quite obvious really. It's the central planet, astrologers call the sun, and the moon and all of the other planets, planets, just for convenience. But it's the central ordering principle around which all of the others revolve. The sun in the sign, therefore, gives us an idea about this central ordering principle and the pattern of unfoldment around the rest. So if you, if you can see the, the zodiac as a kind of a cake with lots of candles on it, the sun is the brightest candle the one that makes most sense. It brings it all together. If we lose touch with our sun sign, our sense of individuality, our sense of purpose, our sense of direction, or the will to live, as Alan Leo called it, he called the sun the life bringer, then we have a sense of chaos, purposeless direction, and a, a kind of just sinking into the um, the flow of different instincts and feelings and needs, all without a kind of central symbol. The images of the sun are quite a few, from the father to the president, the king of a country, the pharaoh indeed. In fact, the ancient civilizations of Egypt revolved around this center of the sun, the main deity. The sun is, is, however, is just the carrier of consciousness, just as the king was thought to be the supreme container of a kind of ordering principle in the state. As Apollo, the sun god, he is the father principle, the breaker of curses, the bringer of civilization, of prophecy, and he brings music. As a kind of champion or a hero, he is a very important character in the, in the um, Greek pantheon. 
Helios, though, has a very important principle, too, to bring into operation here. Helios is just the carrier of the sun. In other words, what he represents is, is similar to what our psychology is. Our psychology carries consciousness in a particular form, but it isn't actually consciousness itself. So the sun, although it radiates and illumines our life and brings purpose and meaning to it, it isn't consciousness itself, it's just the awareness of our own unique and individual path that is portrayed throughout the sun sign itself and therefore will lead us to a sense of unique and individual destiny. In Libra, the seventh sign of the zodiac, we have gone through a journey from, the, from Aries to Virgo, which is to do with the seed being implanted in the earth, going through various transformations to become itself, and then it's full flowering in Virgo. That's the first six signs. They are called the signs of individual development, and often uh, people drawn under these signs, people um, imbued with these signs, especially the sun in them, have to do with that individual development. And can be seen sometimes as either selfish or just uh, focused on themselves or the process that they're involved with. So that when finally we come to Virgo and then above and into autumn, what we have is the cutting of the wheat, the gathering. Uh, people come together and it's a sense that uh, now this harvest is going to belong to the community. The individual sense of the self is broken into two. There is the self and the other. And I think this deep down in the sign is, um, is something that's rather lost because the air signs tend to civilize. They want to make um, uh, they, they want to make theories or um, mental concepts out of things. And Libra does too. Uh, but what what the ancient Egyptians saw as sunset, which is in a way um, from dawn to sunset is very symbolic of Aries to Libra. If we think of the sign of Libra, it has a, it has a bar here and a kind of sun like that. It's supposed to be a, a weighing machine or two parts of it, but it can look like the sun going down over the horizon. And this halfway point through the whole sign, this, this sinking of the individual sun below the horizon where the individual is no more and is somehow then being put forth into the collective. This can be seen as a form of death, the death of the individual self. And I think the symbolism, which by the way in the Egyptian mythology was called the realm of Amentar, the realm below the horizon, and uh, all kinds of battles and things were, were, were to take place as the sun was going through the underside of the earth and the night uh, came. So this sun going down on the individual, the death of the individual, is something intrinsic in the sign that I think Librans are trying to find out uh, how to overcome this. And this is why I think a traditional astrology cause is, that says that the sun is in its fall, is in the sign opposite of its exaltation. In Aries we saw the ram-headed deity, this uh, uprush of uh, sudden excitement, uh, uh, the new fresh things. But in its fall, the sun, as the centre of individuality, has a problem. It must now relate to an another. So in other words, the journey and the pattern of the sign is somehow met in relating to either theory or other. The person finds themselves through the other, or with the other. Now, this is a difficult concept for the individual to, um, to handle, because uh, if it's the concept of the other is the most important, how are you going to find the individual? So, therefore, the pattern in this sign is intrinsically one to do with toing and froing a kind of balancing between self and other, I and thou. So that's where the symbolism of the balance comes from. And intrinsic to the sign, inherent in it, is a, a kind of cosmic ideal. And that ideal has to do with justice. It's to do with fairness. 
it's to do with the, the idea that there's always a give and take. But of course, if you look in nature, they can, nature can be just very cruel. It can have no sense or cosmic theme or theory about justice. Sometimes things just get eaten because it's the law of nature, that's the justice of nature, but it's a very terrifying one for Libra, which is why they impose systems of balance and order or morals or virtues. Um, uh, and it's not that that shouldn't happen. Without Libra, what we get is a kind of just law of the jungle. The dissociated defense in the uh, air signs are to do with somehow just rising above a minute from the ordinary pattern of instinctual and emotional reaction. And so to think about it, so to think about it is to slightly create a distance between oneself and the emotional attachment. This is a curious element, uh, this curious idea, I think, that when in traditional astrology we see um, archetypally uh, uh, Libra is the sign of marriage or the C Libra is the sign of relating, and indeed they are doing, but they are seeking a relating in a kind of uh, imposed way, that they're imposing on it this principle that there is the ideal. And only the human signs can do this. And only the thinking or the intellect can, can to try create some kind of uh, cosmological uh, um, uh, order on, on nature. And in doing this we get the civilizing element. As I say, we have the common graces. We have a, a, a general civility between people. I think kindnesses and courtesies and uh, a general idea of the common good is all, all stems from this sign. We create out of something this, again, this sense that individuals can touch upon and say, yes, that's better than that, or that's better than that. The problem in the sign, or the um, where it can go into its rather shadowy element, is uh, when it starts to judge other people for their coarse behavior. Um, uh, as I described it once in a lecture, Scorpio doesn't mind um, a, you know, a handkerchief or uh, various things falling out all over the floor. It's all part of uh, life's rich tapestry. Life is sometimes cruel, it's difficult, you, you see the mess on the floor, but Libra comes in, sees everything out of balance, it drives them crazy. They go into hysteric, something's wrong here, you know, the, the ordered existence for which they're seeking. Not a Virgo ordered existence, but one that will keep their life together, keep their, their head together in order to miss this chaos, is kind of one of, the, one of the shadowy sides to Libra, that um, when they're looking for this fairness, when they're looking out to life, they often don't see it. And so this sends their sense of individuality or their sense of confidence a bit crazy. Some Librans can live their whole lives looking out, looking for this sense of balance and being constantly, constantly upset and annoyed at the way things go on. This should be this way, this should be that way. And that, of course, leads to a subtle sense of a superiority of a certain kind because they can see the way things should be. Uh, and a certain um, uh, unconscious form of judgmentalism of other people's behavior, not realizing that they may have different needs, different responses, different things or qualities to bring to life. So Libra needs to find the balance between these two, but it's being an air sign, it's difficult because the, the natural instincts, the laws of nature, are somewhat alien to them. It requires other things in their horoscope in order to uh, find out what those are, or perhaps even getting into a partnership or relationship, um, which will then introduce them to these facets of uh, uh, ordinary human life. I'd like to reiterate the idea that uh, every sign is a bias. Every sign looks out in the world, reacts to it in certain ways. It, it looks out, has certain responses to it, but it also looks out through a mode of perception, expecting it to be a certain way. And this is what causes uh, the, 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 the difficulties or what astrologers are, are, are pointing out to, to, with, uh, with, with the various signs. 
Remembering that we contain them all, or each of us have a complete horoscope, therefore we have availability of all of these patterns in, of development. The planets are placed in different signs, and it's, as Dane Rogers said about astrology or natal astrology, we're all looking at the same universe, we all have the same faculties, more or less, but we're just looking at it from a particular angle of vision. As I said in my original statements, the sun sign is the largest candle on the, on the cake. And so, the, looking out from the Libran eyes, what we see is this imposition of a kind of cosmic ideal order, and then we actually meet reality as it is. Now, some of the great gifts of Libra are the qualities of eloquence and charm. Some of the uh, facets we see is a uh, a kind of need to um, make peace with things. They don't like arguments too much. Things out of place cause disturbance in the emotions. And when the emotions can't be thought about or understood or, um, or anything, then they can get out of hand. It's the, the fear that something threatening in the emotional atmosphere might come up and bite them or take them down. Perhaps it's a fear of the next sign of Scorpio Maybe it's the fear of the autumnal season itself that sees the leaves fall. They turn to green, uh, the green turns to gold and, and red the autumn, as the autumn leaves begin to fall. I think that's an old song. But as it does, there's this perception in life that uh, you're, you're midway. This is why a Libra in medical astrology rules the waist and um, the, the mid-region of the body. So it, it also rules the kidneys, which um, uh, are, are about achieving a balance in life. They, the balance of the acid and alkali uh, contents of the body. They also uh, f filter out the impurities in the system, which otherwise uh, might, uh, might clog it up or, or, or infect it in some way, get it out of order. Um, so it goes into the body as well. As I said in my introduction, the sign processes are in, are in different, different lines of, different uh, lines of life, different levels. In sociological terms, we have uh, a person presenting a, a set of morals, grace, eloquence, as a, a sense of need for diplomacy. Um, often in, in uh, Libra, there is a, a sense of subtle social climbing, as if they're comparing themselves to others. And again, here we have this, this quality coming in, psychological. They're looking out and, and seeing who's better than I, you are, or better than so-and-so. And I think this is, comes into where Saturn is said to be exalted in this sign. Saturn and Libra go together in the sense of judgment, of trying to find an order, um, a process of which everybody, if everybody just obeys the rules, then everything would be okay. But the rules are always broken. Nature is like that. Uh, the, the force of necessity, or as the Greeks called it, ananke, which was a force beyond order. Plato uh, always conceived of the idea that Although most of the world was ordered, there was an ordered cosmological system, he could see an order in, in uh, democracy and uh, society. In fact, in the Republic, he wanted to put this order in place as a form of society. Um, but he also knew that there was some part of life which was disordered, chaotic. It didn't obey any laws. It was totally outside of everything. This was called the force of necessity, or an Anki. And you, you, you could see that, for example, in, um, let's say, the evolution of the dinosaurs. One minute they're here, the next minute um, a, a, a meteorite shower comes along and they're, they're all disappeared. Um, that's a force of evolution, of necessity. Nobody saw it coming. This is a great fear of the sign. Disorder, imbalance, things out of place. And so therefore, they perhaps make good interior designers. They make, uh, they, 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 they need to uh, make oneself pleasant, feel good. There's a sense of color and balance and order in the, in the atmosphere. So this is again interior design also to do with dress. The idea that there's an exchange going on uh, between oneself and another. They might make a good salesman or a go-between in some way between one person and another. That's why the law courts are full of solicitors, challenging this and challenging that. 
So this sign of Saturn, this um, placement of Saturn, has a lot to do with uh, the inherent qualities of Libra. And here I just want to introduce one other concept briefly. is the myth of Mart, an ancient Egyptian deity. Um, Mart was the goddess of balance in the underworld. It's a, it's a kind of uh, predating the Christian idea of being judged uh, at St. Peter's Gate. So if you go up there and all the sins are weighed against all the goods, and then whether you get in or not depends on how much you've done. Um, I, I'm making it simple just for the sake of uh, uh, brevity. But in the Hall of Mark, what happens is the heart is ripped out. And the heart is the seat of the truth of the individual, the heart knows. Uh, and, and this is weighed on a scale of balance, and the famous feather of Mart is put on one side and the heart on another, and it depends on how the balance goes, because if the truth, which is the quality of uh, the, the, the real truth of one's nature, how one has lived uh, a life in balance or out of balance, how out of kilter has life got, I think this lies in the fundamental fears that they're going to be judged that other people's opinion are important, that they uh, uh, place themselves in relation to another and start to kind of adjust their circumstances. Venus uh, uh, versus uh, Libra, who was the ruler of Libra, has something to do with this uh, idea that you can get things wrong, that uh, things are out of place. And so therefore, sometimes Libra has a great deal of guilt inherent in their own nature. So one of the things I think Libra has to overcome in their problem of choosing, which is the fundamental problem in the sign. And I say problem, but it's also the fundamental flaw. Every sign has one. Libra needs to make a choice. But if they make a choice, they come down on one side and so therefore upset the apple cart. The sun is always in fall in this sign. One choice means that they've selected one thing over the other. Of course, finding the balance between sometimes making this choice or sometimes making that and going through the uncomfortableness of what choices bring is part of the whole um, uh, 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 pattern of, uh, uh, of the individual. The judgment of Paris in the Greek myths is, is such an example that eventually leads to the Trojan War. But the consequences of choice, taking on moral responsibility for one's own actions, is it. That's what uh, leads the process forward. That's what leads the sense of individual identity to develop through this difficult process of making choices. So it's worst, not worst flaw, but it, it, it seeks the uh, uh, approval of others, uh, an over-reliance on cooperation, on togetherness, and a, a, a disinclination to look at the darker forces of life. This can lead to a superficiality of some kind that air sometimes can just smooth over things and say, oh, well, that's okay, I, I, I don't, don't bother, Let, let's not argue, let's, uh, let's just uh, agree to disagree. This is a very uh, Libran statement, but uh, emotions get lost in the body. As Freud told us, uh, when you repress emotion, they don't go away. They linger around in the system, waiting for an opportunity to come out. Repressed emotion lies in the system, waiting for its desire or fulfillment to be, to be released. In the next sign of Scorpio, we often see the consequences of being uh, too, too, um, uh, uh, too liberal, too, too understanding, and a disinclination, as I say, to look at the unfairnesses of life. How do we account, therefore, for famous Libra and Margaret Thatcher? Well, I've been reading a biography recently by um, Jonathan Aitking, who knew her fairly intimately. And even though on the outside she has a Scorpio ascendant with Saturn there, so it's a very powerful, distinct, unique voice. She, she had a, a kind of front that was uh, deliberate, uh, determined, uh, took no prisoners. But behind the scenes he describes a rather different character in Margaret Thatcher who used to uh, worry very much about the choices that she would make. Once she'd made one, then she would stick with it, um, because she wanted to offer, as I say, this united front, this 
this uh, sense of, um, well, I've made my decision and I'm going to stick with it. This was a, a true Libra in many ways, supported by other, uh, uh, other elements in her horoscope. She also had Mars in Libra, which um, uh, it was challenging. Now, one of her methods was a very Libra method, and I want to talk about it. Uh, her methods of trying to come to a decision, that is. And this is, this is seen, I've seen this operating in many Libans. Um, except in Margaret Thatcher, it's most expressed. What she used to do, she would bring in a minister to ask for their opinion. If they hadn't, uh, if they hadn't done their homework or their portfolio, she would give them uh, a piece of her mind in no uncertain terms. She wanted everybody to, to have genned up on every single amount, produced a document and know their, their brief in detail. That was the raison d'etre, I think, of her abilities and her, her climb to the top was a, a fully uh, competent sense of knowing her brief. And then what she would do is she would take an argument against the position that was in front of her. She would go to war, like Athene, who's God of War, who I also associate with Libra, but it's, a, it's, it's fighting for the right choice. It's fighting for right. And so we can see this also in, um, I think, John Lennon, Give Peace a Chance. Uh, this, this battle for social justice. Um, uh, there are various other characters that are uh, uh, out of my mind at the moment. But this battling mentality used to produce two sides of an argument. And she would battle her side, and the other one would battle her side, and there would be this toing and froing. And somehow, out of that complement of opposites, she would eventually come to a middle position. If she won the argument, she knew she would be right. If the other person persisted, and that argument was still existing after the battle, then she knew that the other person would be right. So far from being this person that knew she was right all the time, she would challenge her, her uh, cabinet, or the members of the cabinet or staff, to really fight their corner in order to know which was the strongest opinion, which was the strongest idea, which was the strongest policy to go with. And once she made up her mind, of course, she went with it. And I've seen this in Libra. The unconscious and uncanny ability to cause arguments. Um, the, the, the asking of questions which uh, seek to put the responsibility onto the other. It's like, well, where do you want to go today, they might say. And then the person might say, well, let's go to Brighton. And we say, well, you know, it's rather dark out. I'm, I don't feel like being by the sea. Well, let's... Um, um, let's go to the city. Well, it's a bit too far, says Libra. And so they get into this kind of dialogue of trying to find out what they want by uh, chatting or arguing with the other. But directness is not one of their fortes. So this is some of the uh, processes that go on in the sign of Libra all the time, uh, bearing in mind, of course, that this sense of balance they seek has a great advancement in human nature, civilization, and social inter intercourse in general. Because this, if there aren't any politics of um, uh, 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 discussion, no politics of a society, we can't live in a, in, in a reasonably balanced way. And so therefore there is a great civilizing element in this most profound of signs when looked underneath. Before I reach a final conclusion, or a brief conclusion about this sign, I'd just like to mention the fact that the planet Uranus has been transiting in the opposite sign now uh, of Aries for quite a while. I can't go into all of the detail for every single Libram, but generally this is an upsetting of the apple cart. Uh, Uranus, when it's in the opposite sign to the Sun and it comes upon its degree, means that there's a kind of uh, a desire to reform, a breakdown of the old. There is something challenging the relationships that they're in or the way they've been conducting themselves in relationship. This can be upsetting to an Aries, to finally uh, uh, upsetting to a Libra, because the, the energy is coming from Aries. It's, something is pushing them forward, saying, what do you want? What do I want in this relationship? What am I getting out of it? And these um, selfish questions are very unlike the sign itself, which is classically known as the um, sign of um, unselfishness and cooperation. 
So there is a disturbing influence, but the disturbance is for the further involvement of the person, and so therefore would not be seen as some kind of uh, fate um, uh, pressing down on the individual. It's simply that it's their time to upset the stability that's going on around it. This may happen a little in the future. This may have already gone, or it may be already going on now for people in the middle of the sign. Leo, uh, Uranus is in about uh, 18, 20 degrees, so uh, we have uh, the, the, the top end of uh, Libra at the moment. So, in conclusion, I would say that the pattern of individual and unfolding development continues throughout the difficulty of making choices. It is also the ability to confront the unfairnesses of society and in themselves, and their difficulty with um, this imposition of the cosmic ideal. And finally, I would say perhaps their life lesson to everyone is there's always two sides to an argument. <laughs>